Hello, hello, Edson Oliveira here. This is the July edition of the TEDx user group meeting. And um, first of all, I have to say that uh, I have to uh, wish a happy uh, 4th of July for our American friends. And I got a few emails from some of the American friends that uh, usually they join us and they, were, they are not joining us today for a good reason. I mean, they are barbecuing or they are doing, you know, some other more interesting stuff with their free day instead of being here. But our Canada Day, I mean, our day was, you know, a few days ago. So I said, you know what, this is a short week. So we have to have our meeting uh, on the usual time and usual date, regardless of the you know, big uh, US holiday. So I have here, not a big crowd, but you know what? I was just telling Daniel that uh, I said, you know what? If it's just me, myself and I, I would be recording this. No problem at all. But I have uh, Daniel with me. Daniel, how are you? I'm good. Very good. And you? Very good. Thank you. Jason, how are you, Jason? I'm good. Everything's cool or hot, I guess. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, we are in the middle of our heat wave. And to be honest, I mean, I hope it doesn't go away. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. You know? Yeah, agree. Okay, guys. Uh, okay, so let's go through, you know, our agenda before we get to our main presentation here. So let's go through some acknowledgements, announcements, a bit of a group time, the main presentation, and we wrap this up. I hope that I have uh, good juice about the and upgrades to keep you guys entertained for a little bit here. So just want to start by acknowledging our sponsors. We have DNN for less that they offer hosting on DNN. We have Easy DNN Solutions with their set of modules. I love their news module. And Hofflin Software. Hofflin Software is the company uh, from Andrew Hofflin and he has been helping me put together our website, which by the way, it's up and running. We don't have a lot there, but we have the the last few meetups with a bit of a summary, some of the links there. I want to uh, switch in a second to the website, but yeah, I want to acknowledge our sponsors. And of course, the Tadag website is live. Let me switch here to the browser and Basically, we just have at this point, we just have uh, you know, the list of the meetups. This has been put together by Andrew and he is using here. If anyone is curious about that, he's using here to sexy content, which is a very content oh, driven module in the DNN space. And that's about it really. And at the bottom, we have our sponsors. And as time goes by, we're going to add more information here. It will be at this point in time, more of a catalog of our meetups with the summary, with the relevant links that were mentioned in that meetup. Okay. And uh, yeah, so that's, that's the one. And the skin was the theme was provided by easy DNN solutions. Well done. Very good. Very good. Yeah. I mean, it was, it, it's been, you know, a slow process, but it's getting there. It's getting there. Okay. So yeah, so that's this, that's the site live. Um, yeah, I mean, the crowd is not that big, so we don't have new people. We just have some, uh, usual suspects here. Paul Scarlett, he sent me an email. He's saying that he'll be joining us a little bit later. But that's fine. Again, I we do this as well for the recording and to keep, you know, the content out there for posterity, I would say, you know. So no new members here. I'm going to skip this very quietly to avoid awkward moments here. Let's see. Updates. Updates. It's actually, I'm just looking at my notes here. So in terms of updates, I don't want to rehash uh, on what I what we already put together at the beginning of end of each month, which is the DNN uh, news. So I just want to briefly comment on two things that 
were some sort of highlights in the latest news that we put together. Uh, one is the, the fact that now, and that seems to be official now, that the, the, the community will be really driving the release of DNN going forward. And if you are interested in uh, hearing more about that, you can check the last virtual user conference put together by Andy Treber, DNN, DNN Corp, where uh, Mitchell Sellers, he spoke about that. He spoke about the fact that now the, there's this um, technology advisory group, which is uh, uh, led by Mitchell Sellers. And apparently what I could understand is that uh, this group will be the one heading the release of DNN. So I'm really curious to see how that will unfold because I think that this is very new to DNN. I don't remember that community was driving that process ever, ever since uh, DNN became a corporation. So it'll be interesting to see how that unfold and, and what will be the dynamics of that. And of course, there will be still, I think that in a, some sort of approval level by the by DNN Corp. But yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this new dynamic. And again, if you are uh, interested in uh, getting more details about that, watch the virtual user conference. By the way, all the, the links that are getting mentioned here, they are included in the PowerPoint that goes together with uh, this meetup. And all of that will be available to download from the new website, from the, the post of this meetup. Okay, so you don't need to make notes about that. Everything will be posted right there. What else here? What else? Those are those were the updates. Resources. Yeah, I wanted to actually let me let me open this up here. I want to make sure that I mention this. And again, this made part of my our, our you know monthly chat. But I'm gonna I'm gonna open this up here. A very good And yeah, we're gonna do hopefully we can Oops. we can get there. Let me pause this. So you're gonna on this link you're gonna find 26 or 25 videos all from presentations that happen during Dean and Connect and you can find all kinds of topics here from technical topics to marketing related topics to to business related topics everything I think if I'm not mistaken all presentations from Dean and Connect were recorded and they are available right from this playlist which again will be shared with the group so you can check this out so again if you haven't been there if you haven't uh, if you don't know which presentations were presented during Dean and Connect everything is here audio quality is very very good it's very professionally done with each presentation being displayed in uh a snapshot of the person who is presenting so very very well put together and uh, yeah that's that's for anyone that wants to check out the presentations of Dean and Connect I mean you you'll get to you know, you'll get a lot of information from here you see from blockchain actually I should I should be watching this uh, <laughs> Jason remember okay yeah. I should be watching this one you know <laughs> <laughs> Anyway. Being that it's going to be the whole internet soon, right? You know? Yeah, who knows? Who knows what's right? coming up? I know, who knows? But anyway, a good list here if you want to dive deeper each, uh, on, you know, a very, you know, variety of, of topics within the Dean and space. Very good one. Every day I'm watching one of those presentations. Very, very good one. And as I said, there is also the virtual conference link. Uh, man, I'm just going to open it here quickly. If you want to watch Andy Treber talking about not only Andy Treber, but uh, Mitchell Sellers talking about the advisory group and the new deployment process. And also you have Ash Prasad uh, talking as well from the NN Corp. So that, that happened about, I think, a week or so ago. A good one if you want to get more 
updates into yeah a little bit more than than a week ago any hey, case Patterson, then, go ahead um how, how long do you spend uh, staying to, like to, to be able to stay in sync with uh what's going on at dnn like do you set aside time in your day i actually so here's the thing i'm on all social channels i'm i'm uh as, as i mentioned to you before jason i yeah. I, I track very closely the Facebook user group, which is a very active group there. And you can see really what's going on in the space via the Facebook user group, but also by following the hashtag uh, DNNCMS on Twitter. So with, uh, I would say that between Facebook user group and the hashtag uh, DNNCMS, I mean, I have my dose of daily DNN news. Yeah. Sure. At the at the as the very first thing in the morning, the very first thing that I the very first first thing that I do in the morning is I I take about fifteen minutes to go through what's happening on the Facebook user group on the Twitter account. I have a look at them and I get to know what's going on. And, and sometimes okay. I put aside some links that I go deeper, you know at another point during the day, but those two places are really a place that uh, keep me informed. But yeah. aside of that, because we run the very end of every month, we run the DNN news. What sure. I do is actually I put aside about, about two hours, <laughs> one to two hours per DNN monthly chat, so I can go through again my Facebook links, my Twitter links, my, uh, I go to the community blog. I see what's going on there as well. I even go to the forums too. So, so I put some time there because again, if, I, if, uh, if I have the presumption of running a one hour show that is supposed to keep people informed, I better be informed myself as well. Yeah, sure. Okay, cool. Clint does Patterson make... does a good job to every time something happens to share that everywhere so everybody knows about it. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, so that's that's really about it. That's how I get to know some of those in. And now one more thing that I usually do is because I'm in all kinds of mailing lists of, of DNN, whenever I see something interesting, I put I flag that so I can review that at the end of the month right before I do the the news of of the month. So again, it's a it's a mashup, that, but on a daily basis, really via Facebook and via Twitter. Okay, okay. So let me get back here to our presentation. Let's see here. Okay, so I'm gonna go through the main presentation. It will I you know, just to give a bit of uh, I guess uh, more context here. Last month, I decided to focus a lot on DNN upgrades, doing content, doing uh, tutorials, you know, serving more and more clients. Because for some reason, uh, last month, a lot of clients came up to us wanting to do upgrades. And it's funny, uh, Daniel, you mentioned something very similar, you know, lately that uh, clients are coming up asking for upgrades. Is that correct? Yeah, more and more. So yeah, so we also saw the same trend. And I said, hey, you know what? Let's put together some two tutorials, some more content around upgrades. And I said, next, let's next to Doug meetup. I'm gonna present about upgrades because I mean, I we have done hundreds of upgrades, but I have not, never done a presentation about upgrades in, in our approach to upgrades because you know each person will have a slightly different approach to doing upgrades there are some best practices but the details may vary from from individual or company to to company and what i wanted to do i wanted to present our approach to upgrades and i would start by asking the question does it have to be a pain and let's see if i can answer a little bit of that during this presentation. So let me just switch here. Let me stop this one and then switch to another presentation here. And let me see here. Okay, so DNA upgrades, do they have to be a pain? 
And to be quite honest, no, uh, no sugar co sugar coating here. They they are a pain. Just based on the fact that I put an, an entire upgrade process here with many steps that you can potentially follow, uh, it you it, it's pretty much indicating that yeah, it's it's really a bit painful. However, my intention here, my goal with this presentation is that at least it, it will give uh, people maybe a set of clear steps that you can go through um, and hopefully that will minimize that pain that you may experience. I mean, if you're lucky, you won't experience that because you're just going to drop the upgrade package from, from, um, from GitHub. You're going to unpack there, you're going to run it. Everything will work fine. Hey, great. <coughs> lucky you. However, no. There might be times that we come across problems. So I went through a very, we go through a very meticulous process when we upgrade sites for our clients and our own sites as well, because we have gone through so many problems before that we don't want to leave too much to be guessed. So instead we work through a step-by-step -step process and here, is what what I will be walking you guys through. So just to give, I mean, a bit of uh, just as a standard intro, a bit of intro about myself. I mean, I've been working with DNN since 2006. I have done a lot of training on the DNN space. I mean, I have done the full day admin training on three DNN conferences. I'm for now, at least, you know, for now, I'm not sure for how long, but for now, I'm a DNN MVP. I run DNNHere.com, which is a DNN video training uh, website. And I run uh, DeskPal.com, which is where we offer uh, DNN professional support, like upgrading as well. But that's it. That's that's it about myself. So I want to start by, by uh, saying that we don't do cowboy upgrading and what do i mean by a cowboy upgrading i mean we don't cross our fingers and throw the upgrade package on top of our sites and wish for the best that's why we have this very meticulous process here that we follow to minimize the, the potential problems now there might be cases that uh, that you may want to go cowboy there that you may want to go, you know, hey, you know what? I don't care about this entire process that you are gonna be explaining here. I just want to get it done and I just want to do it quickly. I want to burn some of the, uh, to burn through some of the steps here, you know, to go, I don't want to go step by step here. What is what is the short version of this? Short version is, is really this, you know, you unzip the latest, uh, upgrade package, put it on top, run the site, see how it goes. Now, before you do that, if you really want to go cowboy here, the very, uh, no, at the very least, you have to back up your site. And uh, from, from, you know, from obvious statements, I'm just going to keep it right here. Back it up, site files and database and go cowboy. Give it a try, go all the way, run it, see how it goes. If it doesn't work, you revert back. However, this is not the process of our choice. Okay. Okay. So here's the process. Here's what we do. First, we copy the site. Then we clean the site. Then we cycle through this process of backup, upgrade, test, document, and repeat. Then we close. Yes, I'm 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 pushing the C's here because I wanted to, I wanted to say that those this is our four C's process. So I'm really pushing the the C's on copy, clean, cycle, and close. Yes, I'm pushing hard here, and and the intention is that I go deeper into each one of of uh, those C's, those four C's. Just a quick note is that the same process is applicable to. DNN or evoke. However, 
if you are <coughs> running DNN, uh, if you are running Volk on uh, DNN Corp's premises, I'm not sure how it works there. We have never done uh, an upgrade that uh, on, on a site that was running on on, on DNN Corp premises uh, cloud. So I don't know about that process. We have done evoke upgrades as well. They work pretty much the same way. And just want to reiterate that this process works for DNN platform and for evoke as well. Uh, yeah, as I said, this is a, a kind of a long process here that we take. Maybe you're gonna take pieces and bits of, of this process to use in your process, you know, to use to to maybe to improve a little bit your process, the process that you you already have in place. By the way, if uh, actually let's maybe let's save. If you want to stop right away, I mean, and ask me questions, that's fine. I will try to monitor a little bit here the chat. Um, and yeah, hey Paul, how are you? Yeah, good. Sorry, I was a tad bit late, but uh, better late than never. No worries, no worries. No problem at all. <clears throat> okay, so let's go to the first one here. The first one is about copying the site. So, to be quite honest, we never upgrade a site where it's live, on, on its live premises. We copy the site to a safe place, and that safe place might be on the server that the site is already running, we create a copy there, or it might be on our local environment. By the way, just want to, to, to give a side note here. This presentation, I, I decided not to do as I would, I decided not to do a demo on how to upgrade because I mean, to cover all the different aspects of this process by doing a demo, one is it would be very easy to, uh, for things to go wrong. And two, I don't think that I would be able to cover the entire material that I, that I want to cover. So the presentation will not have a demo. I'll be opening some files here and there, but there, there will not be a demo to this presentation. So, so first step here, copying. We copy the site to a, a safe place. And we might be, depending on your situation, and your situation might be, you have your site on a shared hosting or you have your site on your own server. So one thing that I want to highlight is that upgrades in this approach that we use, this approach that we go through, you will require to be a bit technical because there's, for instance, if you are not technical, there's no way potentially that you're gonna be able to copy the sites, maybe to your local or maybe to within the same server to another folder to run it from a temporary URL or from a from a local URL, you will need to, you know, to have some technical shops to be able to to handle this. Again, I don't want to give the impression that this is a walk in the park. It is not, unfortunately, but that's just the reality here. So let me see here. Now, some considerations for you to, to, to take. Are you upgrading the site uh, by yourself? Do you need to present the end results to somebody else, to a client potentially, or to somebody else to, to, to have a look? Because, and the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm uh, mentioning that is because when you create a copy, if you create a copy within the same server and you need to share a link as you progress on your upgrade or even after the upgrade is done, if you need to share a link on, on the for the upgraded site, you may need to create a temporary URL. Some hosting providers, they will help you with that. They will provide, if you ask them, they will provide you with a temporary URL that you can use. However, you could very much uh, uh, if you are <clears throat> on a server, you could very much create a subdomain like upgrades.mysite.com 
and then you could use that that uh, that temporary URL, a subdomain or temporary URL as the URL to be shared with somebody else, maybe with a client or maybe, I mean, who knows? Maybe you don't need that. So if you don't need that, that's fine. You can, you can potentially copy the sites locally, database inside files locally and perform the upgrade process on your local environment and your local machine if you don't need to share that with anyone. Um, and to be quite honest, I, I really like to do upgrades locally because they allow me a lot more flexibility in terms of tracking potential problems. But again, your situation might be different. You may need to do that on the server itself, or if you are in a shared, here, here is, is where things may get a little bit more complex. If you are in a shared host environment, depending on who your hosting provider is, you might be able to ask them for a temporary domain and they may even give you a hand copying the site to a temporary domain and copying the database as well. They may even give you a, a hand of that. I'm not sure. I, I know I know a uh, host provider that, that does that, you know. I'm quite sure that Dean and uh, Forless can do that as well. Not sure if they really do. I know that manage.com, they, they can help you a bit more with that, but again, that's as far as I go in terms of guessing how uh, hosting companies can help you with that. So shared hosting, a little bit trickier because you would have to copy, you know, to have a temporary domain to run that. And as I said, hosting providers, they might be able to give you a temporary domain to run the site while you try to upgrade it. Um, what else? Let's have a look here. Let's talk a little bit about requirements. So whatever environment you're going to copy, you're going to create a copy to, if it's within the server, maybe an, another server, or even on your local environment or on a server that you want to use just for upgrades, you have to make sure that it has minimal requirements of, you know, and this is based on DNN 9, DNN 9, yeah, DNN 9. OS, at least Windows 8 and up, .NET Framework 4.5.1 and up, Web Server IIS 7.5 and up, and SQL Server 2008 R2 and up. Now, there's a there's an important note that I'll be uh, making about the database, but I'll do that in a second. So, I mentioned about that before already. Um, one of the ways that you can share your upgrade as it gets done with somebody else, a client or someone that you you need to validate the end result with. Again, you may have temporary domains from your hosting provider, something like mysite.temporarydomain.com. Different hosting providers will have a different temporary domain to provide to you. Uh, or you can do as a subdomain, as I was mentioning as well. If you are upgrading locally, and I'll be a bit technical here, but as I said, this really requires uh, some technical expertise here. If you want to upgrade locally, you can you can change your host's file and, and make it point locally. And I'm going to leave it at that because, uh, again, you can you can find more information about what host file. For that. Go ahead, go ahead, Paul. There's there's someone I don't remember his name. He actually registered localtest.me that points to one two seven zero 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 one. So you just put the domain name anything you want dot localtest.me and you don't need to edit your host file. That's that's that, that's great. That's great, uh, Daniel. I thought it was Paul, but yeah, that's great, Daniel. Uh, so that's localhost.me, is it? Local test. Local test dot dot, dot me. Me. Great. I'm going to make a note of that here. It's very useful. And make a note that I said that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll keep that in mind, Paul. Okay, very good, very good, uh, Daniel. Again, guys, as I said before, this is not uh, for the non-technical crowd out there. So that's why you, you hear things like host files and, and so many more technical stuff that are about to come. 
Let me see if I have anything about this. Yeah, that's about it. Okay, so let me tell you, this is very important. And, and why I mentioned this is because sometimes we upgrade clients' websites and the clients, they, our clients, they are very much aware that we are upgrading the site and we copy the site to a temporary domain. It might be a subdomain, it might be a temp domain. However, we have to be very mindful because this subdomain or this temporary domain, it will be live. It will be live, live not only for your client or for whoever you, you need to share that link with, but it will be live for, for crawlers as well, for, for Google to index that site as well. So the last thing that you want to happen is that you create a copy of, your, of the site and all of a sudden Google index that, that, uh, that temporary site there. You don't want that. I mean, you're going to be messing around with, the, with uh, uh, Google search of your potentially your client's website or your own website. So you have to ensure that you change or you create a copy of the current robots.txt and you have a robots.txt that says this user agents to all disallow everything so what happens is that when and i'll mention google because it's the, the biggest one out there uh when google hits the site and sees that uh that uh definition that uh statement it's it stops right there and it doesn't index the site ideally ideally to be honest you should block you should only allow uh access to that site that temp site from your ip and from your client's ip again that's an extra layer of complexity there that you may or may not want to go through but usually from our experience it's enough to just i know change robots.txt and disallow any indexing of the website very important because in the past we have we have uh, we have messed things up with our own sites created a copy and all of a sudden on on google search the copied site was showing up in the results instead of the live site you don't want that at all now you do that once once you copy and upgrade there however when you revert this back and what used to be the the copied upgraded site and it becomes live you have to remember to put the robot the old robots or the previous robots.txt back again because otherwise if you leave it like that and you put the site back live your site will stop from being indexed again very dangerous as well so dangerous one way dangerous the other way you have to remember to change when you go no, to the copy when you come back to put it live as well. Good, good. Okay. Great. So I mentioned that that uh, I I wanted to mention about SQL Server version. Very important as well. If you are creating a copy of the website, maybe to another environment, maybe to your local, who knows? But be very very mindful that the version that you are copying to of sql is the same version that you that you have it live because the database that you're going to copy to perform the upgrades you at the end of the upgrade process you're going to take a backup again and you're going to move that live and if you on the on your first move to copy if you go to a higher version of SQL and you do a backup there and you try at the end of the process, you try to put it back live and it's an earlier version of SQL, it won't work. It won't restore because SQL is only forward compatible. It's not backward compatible. So the point is this, if the database that, uh, that is live is running SQL 2012 and you move to a SQL 2016, you copy to a SQL 2016 and you upgrade there. When you do a backup, it will be a backup on SQL 2016, which will not get restored 
on SQL 2012. Why am I saying this? Because we have done this in the past. We didn't pay attention which version was on the client's server. And it was an older version of SQL. And we have restored in, a, in, a, in an earlier version. Sorry. It was an older version and we restored in an earlier version. Yes. In a newer version. When we came back, we could not put the site back there. So we had to redo the entire upgrade just because we missed checking the database version. And I just stated here how you can check that. On the NN7, NN8, you can go to host, dashboard, database. And actually, let me, let me flip here quickly. I just want to... Uh, I have a... I have a DNN nine website, and by the way, this arrow here is on purpose. And let me see if I can just log in quickly. I just want to. Okay. If well, I can you revive. Log in, it happened to me many times. Exactly. Really? What you right there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh and, man. And, and it's when everything is done, and you you upgraded the modules, and you did all the hard work that you re <laughs> realize that. So, really, an important point. The very good, very good. Yeah, I mean, I cannot tell you. I mean, we have gone through that quite a few times. And, and I have, oh, we put together a step-by-step -step process internally. And we make sure that that, that is being checked. So, mm -hmm. so here's how we check that on the NN8. So you can go to host, dashboard, and while it loads there. Oh, actually, it loaded already. So we have the second tab here, database server. And here is the version. Now... From our experience, you don't need to be so picky about which subversion of SQL it's being used. As long as, in, in this case here, as long as I'm, I'm copying to another SQL 2016, it's okay. Because, and I don't think I'm wrong here, uh, but I'm, I'm giving a blank statement here. As long as it's within the same major version of SQL, the backups will be compatible. The problem becomes when you are moving from one uh, from one year to another year. But minor versions, like variations here in the in the minor version of SQL, it's okay. It's okay from our even, and I might be mistaken, but I don't think I am. Even uh, service packs, they can be different as well, and you will still be able to to restore that properly. Again, I'm giving a blank statement here, but I think I'm. I, I'm quite sure I'm correct here. They so are getting better at it. In, in my old, experience, you're right. Yes, but if you go back far enough, um, especially 2008, um, in the 2008, you will have problems between versions. Um, uh, even just the, uh, the minor versions will oh, really? cause you problems. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but I believe 12 and, 13, 12 and 16, th this was a... A big complaint. So, yes, it's, but you will come across it in 2008, um, and because uh, I've gotten burned for other reasons, not on DNN, but yes. Uh, so you you're very true. You have to watch the you know what version of uh, database. Best thing to do if you can um, match the server the uh, ident numbers exactly if you can, but you may be lucky. Uh, you know, especially if you're downgrading, going down, uh, you don't know when it's going to trip because it could be a feature they added or whatever. But I've had some trouble, especially in 2008, uh, on specific releases, and it was within the eight 2008 release. So, got it. Um, so especially if you're coming from an older version of DNN and you're moving up, you want to make sure that you've got a, a, if you're your development environment, you've created yourself a SQL environment that you uh, can restore to. So you just best to match the version numbers if you can. Very good point. Very good point, uh, Paul. Uh, okay, so this is where you can check that on DNN 8. Same thing on DNN 7 and on DNN 9. If I can find that one here. So let's see. It's um, servers, settings, servers, and database. So you can see the same type of information under software platform. Now, if by any chance 
I don't, yeah, I don't know a situation that you would not be able to find this here, but just in case, the other way that you can find this if is if you run. Sorry, let me come back here. If you run this command, select at at version. If you run that on directly on SQL, SQL Server Management Studio, or you know if you, you know, if you go to uh, SQL here and you should be able to run that from here so but but again you can do that on sql management studio see and then you have the same type of information okay great so that's sql's version and again we are still in the copying process so let's let's get to the cleanup in a way this is a cleanup and a setup as well because there are a few settings that i i you know instruct my team and, and myself as well to to set things up here so first the 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 first one really is delete unused modules see which modules you are really using and remove the ones that you are not the more modules you leave there and in, in general the more extensions you leave hanging there the more potential problems you can have during an upgrade so again, make sure that you just keep modules that are uh, used and themes as well. If you can minimize the footprint of your website, you should. This is a best practice, not only for upgrades, but to maintain your site in general. Uh, let me see if there's any, yeah, nothing in particular here. One, one note though, just be mindful when you are removing extensions from DNN because there might be some extension that's based on experience that's empirical data here based on, on our experience there are certain extensions maybe modules or yeah most likely modules that there's a column on the extension list that says whether or not it's in use there might be things that are that are flagged as not in use but they might be used behind the scenes and so i we have seen that before we haven't seen this a lot but just be mindful to make sure that you know what you are really removing that you don't really need that at all that you're not uh you know removing something by mistake just a side note here so first one delete unused extensions in general second one to be honest I've never seen anyone mentioning this one here anywhere on, on, on forum questions, on blog posts. I don't know. I don't recall seeing anyone. Maybe we, we were uh, the fortunate ones to have problems with the install folder of DNN. Now, here's what, what we usually do. I'm going to open the site files there as well. Let me see this. Okay. This is a site file of the site that we are running. So go to the install folder and then clean up the following folders. And by clean up, I mean open them and delete whatever is there, whatever is inside, delete them. And I'm going to tell you why, because from our experience, if there are files and there might be files with the extension .zip under auth system containers language module most important really here is modules library provider scripts and skins if there are .zip files on them they will get installed as you call the upgrade URL, which we're going to talk about in a second. So to make sure that nothing that is unwanted gets installed or gets attempts to get installed by mistake, to be honest, I just go through each one of those folders and I delete them. You see auth system here. There are some resource. There's also some dot resources there, which Again, in our experience, they don't seem to get installed automatically, but we just remove them just in case we remove everything here. So we just hit delete and even this placeholder we can clean up. Now, I was mentioning 
about this tip to someone the other day and he just came to me and this person said how about you just delete the entire install folder i said you know what why not i think it's it i think it should be okay see the only the only the only potential problems that you may get if you delete the whole thing is if by any chance you are i don't know using you know a, a even if you are if you are using templates but they are usually not installed from here so to be quite honest i don't see a very clear scenario of where you could run into problems by by cleaning those folders and even the entire folder because the upgrade package of dnn will replace everything that is inside this install folder so you would be safe i tend to think to delete the entire folder however just to be on the safe side i pick and choose the folders and these are the folders that i clean up as i mentioned before this is the list of folders uh, again to avoid installing unwanted extensions that might be hanging around there for some reason for one reason or another again we have seen problem because of that we have seen telerik stuff that that was hanging there in in the i think that in the modules folder or the providers folder provider folder that got installed together with the upgrade and it broke the upgrade so this is this step install folder clean up now let's have a look at the log files the log files that i'm talking about here are the log files created via log for net log for net is a login it's an event log mechanism that was added to dnn back on dnn6 and it generates logs log files under this folder portals default log logs let me open the folder there see okay so let's go to the root let's go to portals zero sorry not zero default logs see normally though do, do this uh, these log files they will log problems that may be might be happening with your with your site some of those logs are the same ones that gets that get recorded on the admin logs of dnn this is not the admin logs of dnn however some of the errors will get logged here as well the reason why i recommend that you delete is not only to keep it clean but most importantly you're gonna want to delete the log from the current day why because you want at least in our case we want to have a clean log that is mostly or completely based on the upgrade process so what we do is all those dot log dot resource files we delete them and as you can see we have one log for for the day to day so i'm gonna delete all of them and that's it you can leave it at that because now what will happen is that when you run the upgrade whatever errors that may happen it will log in the log file as well and now you have a shorter log file because you have a log file only with logs related to your upgrade process you don't want to see um, logs from the first time that you you try to run the site today in the morning you don't want to see them you just want to because log files they can grow a lot by the way it's it's i mean i have seen uh, many dnn websites with a huge amount of log files you know up to a gig of log files because it logged for years and years information over there so again keep it clean and most importantly keep the one from the current day delete that one so you can get a clean uh, log based on the current installation that you're gonna attempt next uh, there's one more step about the log files but i'm gonna mention that a little bit you know down down the road here so let's keep going here now we need to clean the web config as well there are a few places that we really like to clean on the web config first one is 
make sure that you clean the friendly URL. Why am I saying that? It's because from older DNN websites, there used to be this extension called, uh, actually, let me, uh, let me open it. There used to be this extension called Ifinity. Ifinity used to be a very popular extension for DNN back, I think, on DNN 5, four, five, maybe even six as well. I'm not sure if it's up to six, but in any case, it was a very popular extension, URL extension. So in older, you, older DNN websites, you may have a different provider than the default provider of DNN. And you want to, in our case, we have come across this quite often, quite frequently. We have seen other, other friendly URLs uh, URL provider being set up, which would break the installation. So what we do is we revert back to the default friendly URL of DNN, just to be on the safe side. Then once you upgrade, you go all the way up, maybe you upgrade your provider as well. If it's, by the way, if it's Ifinity, you no longer need that. I mean, that has been incorporated into DNN. And again, just ignore, if it's Ifinity, ignore, and just upgrade normally. If by any chance you are using for some reason another third party provider of URL, I think that's uh, DNN Sharp has one and DNN Masters have, uh, has one as well. A few other providers out there. Again, if by any chance you are using another one, you want to continue, go all the way up to, to uh, upgrade your site and then you can try to upgrade the friendly URL that you might be using there, but revert back to the default DNN provider before you perform the upgrades. What else? Auto upgrade. Uh, there's a key in the web config that by default, it's set to true, which is called auto upgrade. To be honest, this auto upgrade is not so much a problem in the last few versions of DNN. I think that from DNN 7 even I think that back to DNN 7 or DNN 8, uh, even if auto upgrade was set to true, the upgrade process could not be installed unless you had host access, unless you had super user access. However, with earlier versions of DNN, uh, you could uh, just call the URL and if the upgrade package was in place, the upgrade installation would kick right away. Again, this is not a big deal because we are copying the site to a temporary URL, to a local URL. You're not upgrading that on the live site. So this is not so much a big deal because nobody else will be able to start the upgrade, you know, before you, because again, you are doing that in a separate URL, a URL that you are the only one that knows at least at this at that point in time, you know, but as a best practice, you should put that to false and by putting that to false, you have to, when you are ready to upgrade, you have to trigger a special URL. And this is the special URL. Uh, you have to call, you know, slash install and slash install.spx question mark mode equals to upgrade. Because you set the auto upgrade to false, you have to manually type in that URL to be able to, to trigger your upgrade process. Okay. Yeah. So. I think this is the last one on the web config cleanup. Okay, custom errors. I would also switch, usually it's set to remote only. Um, and again, depending on how you're, you're doing your testing, if you are doing locally, maybe this is not a big deal. However, if you are copying on the server and you are running on a temporary URL, you may want to turn custom errors off just because if there is an error during the, the upgrade, you want to see that error more clearly. And usually this will help you out uh, to see that error more clearly, you know, again, just, just a suggestion. And then once you go live with the new, the upgraded web config, you can revert this back to potential to remote only or to whatever was there before, if it, if it was not off already. Okay. Uh, yeah, so this is the end of, uh, sorry, not the end of, 
yeah log for net okay that's that's uh, actually this is the last step of the cleanup so i mentioned about log for net i change one setting on the log for net first of all be mindful that log for net was introduced on the nn6 if you are coming from a version prior to the nn6 log for net will not be there yet and again it will only be there from the nn6 up and to more recent versions so there's a file called .netnook.logfornet.config in the root folder of your website, of the DNN website. And I'm going to show that quickly here. Okay, I'm going to go to the root and I'm going to go to that file. See, logfornet.netnook.logfornet.config. I'm going to open that file. And what I do is just an extra step. Again, it's all about extra steps here. You know, I've, we've changed this level from arrow to all and here's what all will give me all will give me will give us doing the upgrade a lot of information that might be useful when trying to troubleshoot a potential problem that may have happened during the upgrade if you just keep it on arrow it will only log errors in the log file it will not log warnings. It will not log other things that may give you clues to potential problems that they may have happened during the upgrade. So I usually change the, we usually change this to all and we save it and then we run the application. However, be mindful that you should revert back to Earl because when you log all and if you keep all here, the log files will grow exponentially it will grow they will grow very very large and you don't want that in a regular operation of your website when it's live you most likely are only interested in having a look at the errors but again to be able to gather more information about the potential problems with the upgrade keep it as all and revert it back later on okay uh Let's see, let's see. Okay, so this was the last. The last one in our cleanup phase. Now, the cycle. The cycle that we go through. So, uh, let me have a look here. Just to make sure that sync here. Okay, great. So, yeah, that's it. So, here's the thing. We advise on a step-by-step -step approach to upgrades. And by step-by-step, -step, what, I, what I mean is, if you're running a DNN5 website, go first to the latest five, then back up and go and see if anything you know, wrong happens there. Then go as the next cycle. Those are the cycles. So if you're running on five, go to the last, version of five then go to the last version of six then go to the last version of seven last ver version of eight then last version of nine now there is a, a bit of a, a note there on nine however before you go through each cycle make sure that you back up because if things went fine from i'm gonna just throw a a, a random number if from five one to five uh if you're running an earlier version of five, actually, let me show this already. If you're running, uh, let's say, uh, version five, and then you move up to the last on the version five uh, family, let's put it this way, to five, six, eight, everything worked fine. However, when you move to six, to the last of six, maybe it got broken. So you don't want to restart this the upgrade process all the way back to the original version. You want to start from the version that it was working fine. In our case, so again, before each cycle, before each upgrade incremental that you perform, back up. Because then you don't need to, if something happens, something wrong happens, you don't need to go all the way to the very first one. You can go to the very to, you can go to the last one that worked because you want to you know you want to fix on that version not sure if this makes sense but uh here 
are the versions that we recommend to upgrade to. And if you go, if you have a look at Adenian's website, you're going to see that they have a more broken down type of approach there. To be quite honest, I don't subscribe to that approach that they post there. I subscribe to this approach. Go to the last version of that current version and and again, keep jumping, keep jumping and back up, jump and back up until you are done or until you break the site and you need to, to fix something. Now, a quick note about DNN 911 or DNN 920. The thing with DNN 911 and 920 is that on 911, the deprecated APIs, they are still there. So there are on DNN 920, just around 500 uh, DNN APIs that have been deprecated, deprecated for a while, they have been removed. Because of this, a lot of third-party modules, they, they got broken. Even, even modules that are theoretically up to date in the DNN store with very recent uh, releases, they, 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 they broke after DNN 920. Uh, so, you may want to maybe you know maybe you upgrade all the way to 804 you have your backup before you go to 920 maybe you try to go to 920 see how it behaves see how it goes if you don't like what you see there you can restart the the last upgrade from 804 and you can go to 911 because again it's the last version of dnn 9 that still includes just about 500 deprecated APIs that some third-party modules, they still use them. However, I noticed quite a lot uh, the third-party modules, module vendors, they have been updating their, their modules to be compatible with DNN 9.2. But again, you just want to be mindful about that, that things may break uh, more, more uh, towards the third-party modules when you do a DNN 2.0 upgrade. By the way, you may ask, okay, Edison, but where do I download the last version of the last upgrade package on each one of those versions? You can go to github.com forward slash DNN software and I will just open that up just quickly here. Uh, if you scroll all the way down, you're going to see the archives have been placed since DNN, you know, DNN one, DNN two, DNN three, all the way up. And if you if you click here, for instance, DNN five, you're gonna see all the versions, including the beta versions of the DNN five family. You know. So again, you can click on this link. It's right on GitHub.com forward slash DNN software. And this was uh, a big work put together by our friend David Poindexter. Uh, David, thank you very much for doing this uploading all those versions of DNN. So that's where you can find those versions, okay? So you have done that. So again, you have done through the first cycle. You were, let's say, in the family of DNN5, you went to DNN568. What do you do? You test. You run the site. If the upgrade, if it didn't give you any errors right there and then, run the site. Try to save some text, try to save, try to use the HTML module, try to save some site set, si try to save site settings, you know, maybe make a minor change there to this, to the uh, site title or something like that, you know, change your host setting, revert it back, try to save it there, try to save page settings, try to save module settings, try to use third party modules that are on the site. Now, here's one thing about third party modules. As I said, this is our best practice here. I, I'm from the inclination of trying to upgrade, bef uh, trying to upgrade DNN before upgrading modules. I, to be quite honest, I want to minimize the amount of work that we have to do on our sites, on our client sites. And if a module, after an upgrade, if it still works well, I mean, why upgrade it right there and then? That's that's our point of view. So, uh, and the reason why I mentioned that is because I did not include here a step about upgrading modules yet, because 
as I said, we usually only upgrade if it's required to be upgraded. Now, keep in mind, keep this in mind. If you are coming from a very old version of DNN, like five or six or even seven, most likely you will need to upgrade third party modules there. So you may want to touch base with your uh, with the module vendor to check with him or with them what is the best approach to upgrade their modules, if it's better to upgrade DNN and then upgrade the module, or if it's better to upgrade the module and then DNN. Whenever you are communicating with a vendor, whether it's about upgrades or something else, make sure that you mention which version of DNN you are using and which version of their module you are running because then they'll be able to advise you on the best approach to go if you are doing an upgrade and you want their their input about you know upgrading their module potentially upgrading their modules as well so test all of that now very important document what you're doing document the problems document how you're fixing the problems and of course what you have done why are you documenting that because Maybe, and that has happened quite frequently with us, maybe you are testing the upgrades on a site that might be critical. The site might be critical and let's say you, you copy the site today, you work through the kinks on, on the upgrades and maybe you only get the site done and ready with the upgrades in a few days. And, and, and if the site is critical and if the site is getting data updated there frequently, you may have to rerun the upgrade process quickly on the site again. So if you don't document which, what are the steps that you are taking during the upgrade and you have to run it again, come on, you, you will have to you know, figure things out again or try to remember that. So document as you go along, document as you move up in the, in the, you know, upgrade path. Let me see here. Yep. And again, it might be the case that you need to do a quick upgrade after you have done your, you know, all those steps in a copy of the site, because maybe the site has new updates after you have, you have spent a few days trying to upgrade the, the copied site, you know. Uh, again, that has happened a lot with us as well. <clears throat> now, let's talk about problems. Whenever, you know, if you have a problem during the upgrade or afterwards, you may want to check your log, the log that has been created there on Log4Net. Maybe the site is even broken and you cannot log in to check the admin logs on DNN. But one quick note is that from what we have observed, Log4Net will include all the error logs that are created in the admin logs of DNN itself and more. Usually, you can get richer information on the Log4Net as compared to what you can get on the DNN admin logs, the DNN admin logs that you can see from the interface. So if you, if you come across problems, check the Log4Net, check what it says there. Now. A big one here, big one that we have done this quite a few times. There might be cases that you see a problem on, on the upgraded site and you, you cannot sort it out. You cannot figure out what's going on for one reason or another. I mean, you, you go you know, to forums, to the web, to Google and all of that and nothing comes up. In case like that, our approach is and this is a troubleshooting approach. This is, we, we try to eliminate the source of problems. So if you upgrade and you see problems and you cannot sort it out what's going on, if it's not a, a th it, it, it might even be a third party module, who knows? But what we usually try to do with very you know, complicated situations is that we get a fresh copy of a web config file from the same version that we have upgraded to, we get a fresh one. Why a fresh one? 
because a fresh one is well fresh it doesn't have the extra you know uh stuff that your web config might be getting because it's getting upgraded so i get a fresh web config of course we copy the connection string to the database and also i recommend to copy the machine key that's important for passwords to to still work and but again those are the two things that we copy from the current web config to the new web config to the fresh web config connection string and machine key and then we get rid of the rest you know we get the, the rest become the fresh one from a fresh DNS install we do the same thing with the bin folder we actually rename the bin folder put another name there and we copy the bin folder from a fresh DNN version and we put it there and we run the site and we see what happens because if by any chance the problem that you are facing before goes away with a fresh uh bin folder and a fresh web config and by the way with the caveat here that if you are using third-party modules on the site when you copy a fresh you know bin folder and replace your current bin folder those third-party modules they will break and it's expected but what you are trying to do is you are trying to eliminate the potential that hmm maybe one of the dll's of dnn didn't get copied properly you want to eliminate that so if you have a fresh web config a fresh bin folder you run the site the error is not there what is the conclusion the conclusion is that there's either a missing file on the bin folder or a, or a misplaced file in the bin folder or there's something in the web config that is wrong now there is a second step to this which is a tedious program uh, sorry a, th uh, a tedious process that is to compare the web config the original web config from the upgraded site to the fresh one and see what are the differences also on top of that you also have the bin folder you can compare uh you know the bin folder that was there before with the fresh bin folder see what is the difference there are tools out there that will help you with that a tool that i'm a big fan and i pretty much use this tool you know almost every day it's called winmerge winmerge is a windows tool that it will help you to compare text files so you can put your old web config the, the upgrade web config with the fresh web config and then you compare pretty much line by line and it, this tool will help you with that will will minimize the effort that you're gonna you're gonna have there but yes it's a tedious pro process but hey you know what i i told you at the beginning this is not a walk in the park so that's that's the first thing the other thing that this application will help is to compare the old bin folder with the fresh bin folder it will tell what are the differences in in, in the in the bin folder case i would tend to say that you are very safe just to copy the fresh content of the bin folder of the fresh bin folder on top of the upgraded one because if there are files missing they'll be they'll be placed uh back or if there are files that that uh the older version is still there they'll be, they'll be uh placed to, uh, on top of uh, of then they'll get replaced um there might be some leftover dll's there that may that might be the culprit on the arrow so it might be the case that uh, you do really comparison now again tedious process both ways on the web config on the bin folder but it needs to be done now if you want to break this down a little bit better and maybe just change the web config with the fresh one first try the site if you still see the problem try the web config approach oh sorry try the bin folder approach and instead of changing both at the same time you may want to change one at a time to potentially minimize you know the amount of effort that you that you need to put in but let me tell you we have fixed a lot of dn and upgrades by using this approach of getting a fresh install getting a fresh web config getting a fresh bin folder we have fixed a lot of them a lot a lot of them after we we came up with this with this fresh 
approach here. Okay. Talking about the bin folder, I had a, a situation like this, and uh, the, the bug that was occurring was because of a DLL in the bin folder, and the bug was occurring even before LogFireNet could log. So really? it's very hard to troubleshoot. So what I did, I emptied the bin folder and put the, the correct, you know, clean files. And then I had to move the DLLs one by one back in until that occurs. So I knew it was that DLL. I, I think it was a PDF generator or something library that would uh, totally fail because it was for an older .NET version and it made everything crash even before log for net could log it awesome awesome and, and again it as as you, as you described there daniel it's it's a tedious process but it is a process that works you will not be second guessing yourself you know and thinking okay what else can i do what else can i do what else? because you run out of options are you going to give up in the upgrades and uh, i'll tell you this we have never given up in any dna upgrades and you know we have done a lot anyway uh so again even though it's tedious, but it's a process that that works quite well, you know. And it's and you know it's now in your and repertoire as well. Go ahead. Yeah, totally. Uh, I can't stay. Uh, I, I'm here like another two or three minutes because I have to leave for another meeting. Mm -hmm. But uh, thank you very much for that information. Very useful. And I just wanted to add, uh, if you allow me, thirty sure, seconds. Sure. Uh, with DNN before 6, so up to 5, 6, 8, uh, DNN used to come with what we call now core modules, which were modules that were provided with DNN. And starting from 6, they were, they were, they were removed from the install and upgrade packages. So those modules are uh, were a little, some of them were maintained, some of them were abandoned. They're all on the GitHub DNN community organization. And uh, they are being maintained now more than they were in the last years. So if you have any issues with the module that that that, that was provided, uh, please reach out and uh, be, they're, they're getting maintained now. Oh, I just I just want to mention I, I just skipped a, a bunch of slides here, Daniel, because <laughs> I, I'm going to mention about what you are doing and, and about the 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 the, the post that you have put together. Okay. Awesome. I didn't want to interrupt, but since I'm, I have to leave, so I, I thought I'll, I'll push the, this in. But um, reach out if you need help with the core modules. And thank you very much for your presentation. Awesome, awesome. Daniel, thank you very much and have a good one. Good to have you, you here. Bye-bye. OK, so let me go back here to where, where we were. So yeah, so problems do, do this whole thing that I have already mentioned here. Win merge is a good one, good tool to use. Um, editors. Editors is really a big source of problems. As you move up on your DNN upgrades, as you as you move from one version to the next one, make sure that the correct uh, editor is being used as a default editor. You may want to check that on your web config to make sure that the default one for that version of DNN is the one actually being used because, again, that has been a source of problems from our experience as well. You can open the web config, you can find the default um, editor, and then you can change to, to the correct one from that version of DNN as you upgrade. Another problem that you may come across are skins and containers that have references to SOPAR and to action menus. Uh, not so much skins, we haven't come across too many problems with skins, but we have come across with uh, problems with containers and this is the type of error that you're going to be seeing if you come across an error from a container that has references to those old uh, libraries and uh, if the site wakes up we can have a look at that okay so this is a typical error it shows the the uh, container uh, yeah the container name and it talks about so far very simply i have i think i have it open here just to demo that one you can easily just delete the SOPAR references and the action button references as well and then you have to get rid of that in the code too action button whenever there is an action button there 
in here as well. And this, I'm just opening the, the, the container. And if I save this and I try to refresh, we should have a working container again, as we have, see? Now we can see the container. So very common problems that happen when you are upgrade. Now, if you come across major skin problems, you may come across if if you, if you are using a very old skin from a very with a very with a so par, you know, build up of 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 menu. Uh, again, you will need to you will need to either get a new skin, get a developer to fix that for you. But uh, but but only if you are coming from very very old versions of DNN. Okay, so more problems here uh hopefully you nor, nor you nor your client not not neither your clients have changed the core of dnn but if you did change that for some for whatever reason when you when you apply the upgrade package of dnn you're gonna override your changes and what i'd recommend is that get a proper developer involved to avoid change the the dnn core now i'm gonna i'm gonna make a parenthesis here when i say proper developer what i really mean is that someone that can really make sure that they stretched out dnn you know the dnn extensions to the point that hey you know what now i know for sure that you cannot accomplish this by creating extensions. We really have to change the core for whatever reason. Very few cases I have seen uh, the real need to change the core, but there there might be some out there, and I, I think I've heard of some. But uh, but again, ideally you are not changing the core of DNN uh, at all. But if you are, you will face problems with that because those will be overwritten by and and. A little change that I see a lot of people doing is they make a, a small little a small little changes scripts. They add some scripts to the default .aspx file, and of course, when you when you put on top uh, the new upgrade package, it will overwrite those changes. Okay, so again, please no change to the DNN core. This is not the proper way to do things. Again, I understand that there might be cases that it's required, but should not be the the, the rule. It should be the really really rare exception okay so let's see here where we are problems with third-party modules of course uh, what i mentioned before i would recommend to try to upgrade them before to try to upgrade the third-party modules before you upgrade uh the the core site however we don't do that we usually don't do that we we try hard to avoid upgrading third-party modules unless we have to and you know, if you if you want to have a look, maybe there is something on that modules page on on the DNN store. Check the extension page, see if there is a new version there that is compatible with the version of DNN that you are going to. And contact the vendor because they'll be the best one to advise you on, on how to proceed with your potential module upgrade. Hopefully you don't need that, but if you do they will advise you well and keep in mind that you may have to pay a license there for a new version of the module from that vendor <clears throat> okay community module so this is this is something that i uh daniel was just mentioning uh daniel is uh, daniel Valadas is putting together a new initiative to revamp older community modules like uh, i mean there are so many there is and there's a link attached to this to this slides. You can see when you download the what is that the uh, the, the the PowerPoint. So there's this blog post that he talks about a bunch of DNN community modules. And let me let me open it here. And where are they nowadays? Where you can download them? Where can you find them? How, uh, which version of DNN, DNN they are compatible with? You see, this is the blog post. A bunch of modules here, community modules that are no longer part of DNN core, but they can be installed aside. And again, he really went on a full blown on describing, finding where they can be 
they are available and showing whether or not they are compatible with DNN 9.2, which is the last version as of today uh, of DNN. So, yeah, community module. So, um, that's about it. And that's about it for the cycle. Then you repeat. So, again, you do that for each major version of DNN. You repeat and you do it again and again until you reach finally DNN 911 or DNN 920 or whatever version you're going to be upgrading to because hopefully this video will be available uh, now out there for many, 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 many generations of DNN. You repeat the process, restart the cycle. Yeah. And then. You close, you finish, you bring the site live. If you are, if you have copied the site to another folder on your server, maybe it's just a matter of reporting the IIS and make sure that the alias is correct. Or maybe you have to bring over the site, a site files backup in the database backup. You have to send it over again to your hosting provider. If, uh, if, uh, if you are in a shared hosted environment, but again, you bring it back. Just a, a, a quick note here. If you are copying within the same server, make sure that you don't leave a mess there for your own sake for later on, because if you copy this database and you copy the site files, you may have a different folder name or a different database name that has the, the name upgrade. And now you make this all live. And now what used to be the live site is called upgrade site. So again, just for your own sake, for future reference, make sure that you keep things clean and don't leave a mess over there because it's very easy after a process like an upgrade to just want to get it done and over and leave a mess you know on your server now re remember to revert back the robots.txt file because otherwise your site will not get indexed and remember as well to uh, revert back the log for net value from all to arrow only because um, then your logs will not grow exponentially. Um, what else we have here? Uh, I've mentioned that already uh, a, a little bit. So you may say, but Ederson, you know, my site has new content. It took me a week to upgrade the site and the live site is running there. Maybe new users are getting created maybe new content is being put in place. So this is one of the reasons why you document, you document every single step that you go through, because now if you need to do it again in a new, in a, in a, in a up-to-date version of the site, you can go through it quickly. You can go through it. You have, you know, a list of steps and within, hopefully within an hour or two, you can go through it very quickly. Now, uh, uh, keep in mind that if you want to, to make your site offline, you can just add a file called uh, with this exact name, app underline underscore offline dot hm. That's an HTML file. And if you put that in the root of your site, your site will go offline. It will not be visible anymore in this page this html file will show up instead maybe you want to put uh, a message there to you your users that you know the site is is being maintained or something like that but you can use this file to shut down the site now if you upgrade your site on the live site and you have to rename you have to take this file away because otherwise you won't be able to to call the upgrade if you have this file on your root folder. So again, be mindful about that. And hopefully you have documented the steps and you just need to run through it again quickly this time around. Um, I'll be honest here, I'm not a big fan of upgrade modules, but I have seen people and clients that they, they live by their upgrade modules. Uh, uh, one that is current, currently in the DNN store, which was the only one that I found, is the DNN upgrade module by Evotiva, which has a good companion module called DNN backup, which again, you can create a backup with the DNN backup module, and you can upgrade the site with Evotiva 
DNN upgrades. Again, you can try to use these. To be quite honest, I think that this is more suited for the cowboy upgrade style. It's not our style, it's not my style, but people use that quite successfully. And if you're lucky enough that your site doesn't have you no know, too many problems to be to, to deal with, you may want to try you know, a combination of those modules. One to back up, the other one to upgrade, and cross your fingers, see how it goes. The good thing is that you can revert back. In case something goes wrong, you can use the DNN backup to revert to the previous version and you get your site all up and running again uh, before the failed upgrade attempt. Again, all links will be shared in the PowerPoint notes here. And more useful links, I mean, uh, this is a slide just with links and there are even more links on the notes of the PowerPoint slides. That's really about it. We are right on our eight o'clock mark. Um, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, if you have a different pros, different steps that you follow, maybe you know what, maybe you don't agree with some of the steps that I have recommended here. Maybe you have your own, maybe you have something that you want to, you'd like to add to the steps that I have presented. By all means, send me an email. Uh, and if you are having difficulties as well, send me an email, I'll be more than happy to contribute to your upgrade as well. Um, this is Thanks, about that it. Um, no, no, that was Jason? Great. No, I was just going to say that. That was great. You've com completely convinced me into hiring you to do my upgrades. <laughs> oh my God. Because, because that was been... not the intention. No, I, I understand. I would have been completely the cowboy, right? Like if that's that's certainly the attempt I would have done, but the uh, uh, you, you you highlighted a lot of key interesting things during that too that uh, your experience has really shown. So that's kind of cool. So thank and, you for doing that. And, and and here's the thing. I mean, nothing wrong with the cowboy approach. If it works well, great. Hey, you save yourself a bunch of uh, you know hassle, and it can be it can be very fast. Here's my my final note about the and upgrades. The, the upgrade the, the upgrade of a of a, a DNN platform is very solid is very is very uh, consistent the problem becomes usually about the extensions that we add on top of on top of DNN but again I I don't think that this really you know justifies it just explains why things can get messy because of things that have been added to uh, the DNN website, but again, usually it can it it can be very smooth. You no, know, here and there, here and there, we find we find a good one. You know? Yeah, I'm I'm sure I have lots of interesting things in there because along the way, I've had to shoehorn some stuff in, right? Uh, no, yeah. not to the point where I'm changing core or anything. Uh, more like using some interesting modules that then you know use some frames to connect out and stuff like that too. Right? But anyway, awesome, very awesome. good. Let, let me see here if I know I think that this was it really let me go back to the main uh, to Doug and then we finalize here and that's it uh, again we discussed a little bit already it was great again small crew but that's fine that's awesome again as, as I as I said before if it's me myself and I I'll still be doing this still be doing the presentation but next time next month it will not be myself, it will be somebody else that I'll be inviting to do the main presentation. Have a great, you know, July and I'll talk to you guys, to you, Jason, and to you guys, whoever is out there in a month. All right, take care, Anderson. Thanks. Cheers. Thank you, Jason. Bye.